The Mark VIII heavy tank holds the distinction of being the result of the first successful international cooperative tank project. Developed with input from British and American designers and engineers, intended to be equipped with British weapons and an American engine, with parts made in the US and Britain, all to be assembled in France. It was a truly international undertaking. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Armourer's Bench. My name's Matt. Today we're going to take a look at the Mark 8 heavy tank. The Mark 8, sometimes referred to as the International or Liberty Tank, owed its basic design to earlier British heavy tanks, but a number of important changes were made. This is the last part of our series looking at World War I US tanks, so don't forget to check out our earlier videos on the Ford Model 1918 and the Model 1917 light tank. Intended for introduction in 1919, the war ended before the Mark VIII could enter service, and even before its French factory had been completed. It did, however, see some production and interwar service, providing the heavy tank backbone of the US Army's tank force for many years. This footage is great as it gives us not only a look at the exterior, but also the interior of the tank. Here we get a look aft, towards the engine compartment and the driver's position. The design evolved from the work of British Lieutenant G.J. Rackham, with later input from American engineer Major Herbert Alden. The Mark 8 Heavy was very much an evolution of the earlier British rhomboid heavy tanks, but Rackham and Alden made some important improvements, chiefly the redesigning of the tank's sponsons which housed a pair of British six-pounder guns. While the tank was a foot narrower than its predecessors, the Mark VIII's new folding sponsons could enable the tank to be transported more easily by rail, and also, in theory, navigate narrow spaces. Alden patented this feature in December 1918. Alden's sponsons were hinged at the front and mounted on rolling bearings so that they could be pivoted inwards. Additionally, the commander's outlook turret positioned on top of the tank, which had vision slits on all four sides, was also retractable. The Mark A directly addressed several shortcomings of the earlier British heavy tanks. Firstly, the engine was insulated in its own compartment to prevent exhaust fumes overwhelming the crew. A new ventilation system was added, with a fan keeping the fumes out of the fighting compartment. Secondly, overall visibility was improved, with protected vision slits, and the addition of a tank commander's outlook turret. Another important design change was the move to longer tracks. With each segment about five inches in length, this required a dozen less links compared to the earlier Mark V. Each of the links was shallowly stamped to increase their strength. In terms of armament, the Mark VIII was designed to be solely male, with guns in its sponsons, not machine guns. However, with a raised tower on the tank's roof, this provided positions for five machine guns in hemispherical ball mounts. Two more machine guns could be mounted in the tank's hull doors located behind the sponsons. Initially fitted with Hotchkiss guns, these were later replaced by the M1919 Browning tank machine gun. According to the Mark 8 1925 manual, the tank carried 21,000 rounds of machine gun ammunition to keep the seven machine guns carried on board fed. 182 rounds of 6 pound ammunition, along with 26 smoke shells, were carried for the main guns. Ammunition for the 6 pounders was held in a central ammunition storage box, but the sponsons also had shell storage spaces surrounding the guns themselves. The 37 ton tank was to be powered by an American V 12 aircraft petrol engine manufactured by the Liberty Company. Although a cheaper, water cooled Liberty, was eventually used in the post-war American tanks. The British developed a similar 12-cylinder engine from Ricardo. This, in theory, produced 300 horsepower, with a top speed of just over 6 miles per hour and a range of just under 40 miles. The Mark 8's engine was moved from the centre of the tank to a separate engine compartment at the rear. This not only reduced the engine heat and fumes in the fighting compartment, but also made communication easier. Some sources also suggest that the Mark 8 was the first tank to have an electronic intercom system. The tank's armour was also increased slightly from the previous Mark V, with 16mm of frontal armour 
and between 10 and 12 mm at the sides. Less vulnerable areas had an armour thickness of about 6 mm. The American Mark 8s were initially planned to be manned by an 11 man crew made up of a driver, commander, two gunners, and two loaders to man the six pounders, and a further four machine gunners and a mechanic. Later crew complements probably dispensed with the two machine gunners, as the US Mark 8s operated during the interwar period, dispensed with the two machine guns located amidships. The British crew was planned to be smaller with eight men fighting the tank, made up of a driver, commander, a pair of gunners and loaders for the main guns, and two machine gunners, who were tasked with manning the tank's various machine guns. Impressively, the 34-foot long tank also had room for as many as 22 infantry to be transported. As an Allied collaborative project, the production of parts was to be a collaborative effort as well. Britain was to contribute the armour plate, structural framework, and the main armament, America's contribution was to include the automotive parts, including the engine, brakes, drive sprockets, gears and transmission. The French were largely uninterested in British heavy tanks, and their contribution to the project was a factory near the village of Nouvelle Palo, about 165 miles south of Paris, in central France. Critically, located well away from the fighting in the north, and on the main rail route, Construction of the impressive factory appears to have begun in early 1918, with the framework of seven long production halls and the installation of a power plant and generators, as well as the building of railway sidings, all of which was completed just before the armistice of November 1918. Contemporary photographs taken in January 1919 by the US Army Signal Corps show the factory with its roof in various stages of completion, its shop floors unfinished, empty and open to the elements. The factory would eventually be completed and used by the French army as an artillery park and later as a maintenance depot. The original plan was for the tank parts to be shipped across the Channel and Atlantic through France's western coastal ports and to be shipped by rail to Nouvelle Palo, where they would be assembled into working vehicles. It was envisaged that the workforce would be made up of Chinese labourers with British and American foremen as managers. As many as 3,000 tanks were planned for 1919. The British intended to build 1,450 Mark 8s for their own use, in addition to 1,550 to be produced for general Allied use. The British tank parts were to be manufactured in Manchester by the various workshops of the Manchester Tanks Association, as well as in Glasgow by the North British Locomotive Company. Mass production in Manchester never got underway, and the initial Mark 8s were built in Glasgow. Just 24 are believed to have been built, and sadly, all but six of these appear to have been scrapped almost immediately. The American tanks were assembled by the Locomobile Company of Bridgeport, Connecticut. The American assembled Mark 8s completed acceptance trials in the spring of 1919. With the end of the war, the US order was reduced, from 1,500 down to just 100. 100 sets of hull components were bought from Britain and assembled with corresponding American parts at the Rock Island Arsenal. The Mark 8 was the last of the British rhomboid heavy tanks. The handful of British Mark 8s built never entered service, but the 100 American tanks did, along with the American built M1917 and M1918 light tanks, as well as the Renault FTs, and the Mark V heavies brought back from France. The US Mark 8s remained in use as training tanks until around 1932. Today, just three are believed to survive. Two in the US, and one in Britain. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Mark 8, a fascinating footnote in World War I tank history. Don't forget to check out the rest of our series looking at US World War I tanks. We have videos on the Ford 3-ton Model 1918 and the Model 1917 light tank. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider supporting us over on Patreon. Tab is an entirely community supported project and even just a dollar a month really helps us to keep putting these videos together. Another important way that you can help the channel is by sharing the video with friends and helping us get the word out about the project. Thanks again for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.